Yo, hey, what's up, guys? It's July 15, 2013, and I figure I'd do a opposite day video. Instead of a normal unboxing, I'm gonna do a boxing video. Now, most of you guys know I sell a lot of comic books off of eBay, and for the past two months, I must have sold and shipped over 200 comic books. Yet, this video is gonna show all of my um, buyers and YouTube subscribers how I ship my comic books. Now before I proceed guys, I do want to mention that everyone has their own method, their own way, their own opinion, okay? Now I don't disagree on someone's opinion because that's their own, but me preferably, me, I've received comics that were damaged, I've received comics that were poorly shipped, I know firsthand not to ship comic books. And so my method has been quite beneficial for me um, in ways of, of profit and plus for the buyer. When you buy a comic book from me, you're guaranteed it's going to come really nice and really secure. Um, I do offer on my eBay uh, page or at least my auctions, that if you do want a higher standard of shipping, meaning uh, whenever I ship my comic books, they ship in a United, uh, United States Post Office uh, mailer envelope, just like this. But I have thick cardboard, oversized cardboard, in with the comic to protect it, to protect the corners, okay? But I'll go over that in a, mit in a bit. Um, but what I was trying to mention is I do have a second option if you buy a comic and you want it shipped in a box to even prevent further damage I can do that but again it's gonna cost a little more extra because we all know it costs more if you ship a bigger item or a heavier item so that's an option in this scenario um, I'm gonna do two different methods pretty much how I ship them in an envelope but for this buyer it's going in a box Okay, so let me, uh, I've talked enough, let me get started. In this comic book, this was just recently sold off of eBay, that's Tales to Astonish number 59. And how I ship it is, pretty much I get two nice sized pieces of cardboard, okay. These cardboard pieces I obtained from used old boxes that were shipped to me. Um, I can't use the box, but I can use a cardboard. So I pretty much cut them out in a dimension that would fit inside this priority mailer okay this priority mailer is free from the post office and you can get boxes also to ship your stuff free at your local post office these cardboard pieces right here guys give you dimensions just so you guys can get a better uh, understanding of how I ship um, this would probably be just under 12 inches in length and let's see here, width would be about eight and a half inches in width. So about 12 by 8.5, okay? So first thing I do, I get one end for the bottom. I put the comic upside down, just like that. And the reason why I do that is because if I ship it like this and I put tape on the corners, there's a good chance if I if the tape is too tight, I don't want it to put indents on the comic. So that is why I do it upside down. So this way the tape ha is against the actual backing board of the comic. So there won't be, uh, if there is an indent, it will go directly on the backing board and not on the comic. Let me get some tape here. I'll probably just fast forward this so you guys won't be so bored. Okay, and also guys, before I ship stuff out, I always make sure that the fold on the comic book bag, it's taped. Don't know if you guys can tell here, but see, it's taped. You don't want your comic book sliding out. <laughs> so I gotta make sure that the comic book uh, bag is also taped as well. And if you noticed, I taped all four sides. The four sides, excuse me, um, will prevent the comic book from sliding around. That's the number one case, or the number one uh, a cause of damaging your comic books. If there's not enough tape or it's really flimsy, 
it will slide around, your comic book will then end up coming to a corner and then it will get bent. And notice on the corners, there's a good maybe half an inch border all the way around. Okay, now on ev not every comic book that I send out, not every one that I do that, only when I actually send them in a, maybe a big box or an envelope, I make sure there's a one inch corner around. If I ship it a different way, the corner may be smaller or even wider depending on what kind of box I use. But anyways, to get back to this, I make sure that there's corners just in case if there is a bend, if it does get dropped or dinged, it bends the cardboard, right? It bends the cardboard and not the comic. So as you can tell, see, it won't damage the comic. Now with that done, I put another layer and the cardboard, guys, it's it's not super thick, but it's thick enough to pretty much you can't bend. I mean, in order to bend it, you need to put some good force to it, some good strength. And being that the fact that it's doubled now makes it a little bit more even difficult uh, to bend the comic, okay? So let me uh, take this up real quick. So as you can tell, there you go guys. That's pretty much going to be able to protect the comic book. Now the dimensions that I gave you, like I said earlier, it, fit, it will fit perfectly in this priority mail envelope. See, there you go. It fit perfectly. Now there is one problem if you guys do use priority mail envelopes and you ship more than one comic, it's gonna start pretty much just bulging up. And the corners, the sides, you would need to end up trimming a little bit off the edge. So instead of having a half an inch edge border, you would have to trim pretty much on the sides in order to to uh, get it into the mailer. And that's only if you ship more. I don't recommend more than probably four comic books. You can probably try to get five in here, but that's pushing it. Anything more than five and above, I usually ship in a box uh, just to you know protect the comic book so it doesn't get damaged. But usually one, two, three comic books can fit in here with no problem. I've done it with four and it's been no problem at all. Um, but on the higher end comics, if I am shipping, you know, four high end expensive comics, no way. I put that in a box. But usually all your modern, newer stuff that's $10, $20, um, I can do that within the mailer. I, I don't have to worry about it. If it does get damaged, I don't mind giving a refund. I can do that. But so far, none of them have been damaged. So that's pretty much how I do it. But in this instance with this comic book, just for an example, see, it does fit in the mailer. I'm going to be shipping this in a box in a uh, United States priority this is a medium flat rate box okay guys as you can tell it's pretty deep it's a nice size box come on stand up there we go and the comic book of course is gonna go inside the box but before I do that I have a bunch of newspaper so hold on one second so I'll ship the comic book right here in the middle as you can tell I'm gonna put paper right here put paper right here pretty much paper all the way around the comic book so it's pretty much just floating right in the middle okay hold on one second and so this is it guys right here as you can tell right here's the comic book right in the middle newspaper all the way around so this way in case the box does get crushed or damaged on either side the newspaper should prevent it from squishing the comic book because the newspaper is pretty light. It's not really, it, it's not stuffed in there. I don't, I did not package a whole lot of newspaper in there. Just enough to keep the comic book from moving around. And uh, I close it up. I close it up and I already have the, the label right there ready to get sent and uh, I'm good to go. And there they are. I have a few comic books that I'm shipping out today, guys. Here's the box one and a few other ones in mailers. Um, but I do want to make my point that I don't want to say that my method is the best. No, it's not the best, but it does work. And I, have, and I haven't received any complaints. And plus, um, I'm pretty confident that, you know, 
again, these are going to be shipped securely. But really, honestly, guys, truthfully, there's really no 100% way unless you're shipping something in a, me in a metal container. I mean, something's always bound to happen. Um, I've worked at the post office before. A cousin of mine worked at the post office before. And, you know, there's always this, you know, slight chance of something getting damaged. But at least with hopefully with the thick cardboard that I use, even with the box, it at least prevents damage from happening, you know, a good percentage. But again, like I said, it's not 100% safe. Nothing really is. But um, again, leave your comments, questions, concerns. Hit me up because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of concerns. I'm sure everyone ships their own way. But at least with my method, um, it, at least it, it's a little bit more protective than just shipping in a plain bubble mailer or with no cardboard at all, if you know what I mean. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, thanks for watching. Take care. Peace.